if you had the opportunity to win one million dollars, <laughs> one million dollars for spending a week in the Amityville house, could you do it? I think I would bring a lot of sage and um, Palo Santo, and I think I could do it then. Um, but as far as like the energy, I would feel the energies of all of that, like, yeah. But for how much money? One million for one week. I mean, I would give anything for a million dollars, so I think. <laughs> you heard it here I might first, <laughs> folks. Anything for one million dollars. Wouldn't we all? Yeah. <laughs> you never know until the opportunity presents itself. Salute, my dude. Johnny Horror, and with me this evening is Miss Abigail Bowen, returning <laughs> champion, because you have now officially been on the podcast more than anybody else. No, no, Brian, that's, that's, Brian, yeah. Brian, Brian, Brian has three. Yeah, Brian yeah. has three, but you also have three. This so. is my third one. So, so yeah, uh, but I was thinking like of the like original like people. Uh, of the like OG podcast because like Brian's on the Johnny Jaws cast, which is like really its own thing. So. Yeah, so he's got a little more yeah. cred than me, but yeah. you know, as he should. Uh, we, <laughs> we don't want to give him too much credit though. Cause oh, he's amazing. He, so. no, no, no. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> he's just fine. He needs to be reminded of that. Otherwise, his head's going to get too big. Okay, and sorry. there's only room for one egomaniac on this goddamn show. And it's sitting right next to me. Oh, hey. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. Um, we are once again in the thick of it. It is Halloween season, mm -hmm. and you were my first guest uh, this time last year, mm -hmm. um, and that was very, very exciting, breaking new ground in the podcasting terrain, and it was great to have you on as a first guest, because as I established on that episode, you are one of the few friends that I have that legit loves horror movies, like, yeah. Yeah. goes out of your way to watch them you like scary stuff spooky stuff and you mm -hmm. love Halloween mm -hmm. so it's only fitting that you be back during Halloween season of course um I think maybe we touched on it a little bit uh in the previous episode but what are some of your favorite Halloween traditions we've talked about this before um so I don't know mine they kind of change as I've been growing up, but definitely I'm growing my own pumpkins. Did I tell you that? No, you did I think not. I told you that. Okay, so last year I started growing my own pumpkins at my mom's house in Ojai where she has like automatic water and a gardener and everything. And I got two like really big pumpkins. I have 12 as of right now. Jesus Christ. Yeah. They're a little bit smaller, so they're like carving pumpkins, but... Yeah, I think that's my newest tradition, besides, like, obviously making a list of movies that I want to watch and um, decorating my house, which I always try to pick a theme for mm -hmm. the movies that I watch, and I'm going into, like, millennial era 
Oh, so, year, so like, it's gonna be like late '90s, early 2000s. Okay. So think like the faculty mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So um, I actually made that list two months ago when I was on vacation. Nice. And I'm like really excited to. So what what else is on the list? Is it like I know what you did last summer. I know what you did last summer. Urban um, legend maybe. Urban legend. Yeah. So there's like so it was actually I stole this from Vulture. They um, wrote an article and they like made these subcategories. Mm -hmm. So there's like the um, t-shirt boys. So like anyone in like a wife theater. So one of them is like House of Wax with Paris Hilton. That's yeah. in the under like mm -hmm. the t-shirt boys. Mm -hmm. There's the um, shameless remakes, but you still want to watch them. And one of them, Beyonce was in it. I'm gonna, it's like a slasher movie. And it was like Beyonce's first, I'm oh, totally dude, wish I had this list of me now. Um, shit. If, that... I, I the the see, early aughts yes. like horror is not my strongest oh, suit. Oh, that's it's, my favorite. It's really the, the the genre that I'm like, God, that was just a time of like fucking Creed being on every soundtrack okay, and who, everyone looked. I like Creed so way too pretty and um the just the. The believability factor just goes right out the window with oh almost God, every God. single one of those movies. Yeah. But I will say, I will give you this. I hope this is on your list. If it's not, um, uh, this past Valentine's Day, I made a point to watch uh, the Denise Richards starring uh, Valentine. Yes. Which I thought was great. Yes. I had a blast watching that. That was I, a lot of fun. Yes, so. that one is on my list. Urban Legend. I haven't seen Urban Legend. What? Not seen it. I, I've been, it's kind of, it's in my periphery. It's one of those ones that I'm like, I'm going to get around to that. It's going to happen soon. Yeah. Um, and I I have been wanting to rewatch I Know What You Did Last Summer because okay. I haven't watched that one since uh, probably right after I saw Scream as a youngster. So like 14 yeah. So I think in my list, like Scream 4 is on there. And then... Halloween H2O. So I think it, you're probably thinking of Scream 3 because that one came out in like 2000. Okay, so that's Scream right. 3, not 4. Um, right, okay. But that one, Creed on the soundtrack, Halloween H2O, Creed on the soundtrack. Um, so you'll Wait, be, is you'll, Creed the new Nickelback? Uh, no, <laughs> Nickelback is the new Creed. Like, Creed like, burned hot and fast. <laughs> they were a really big deal and I then... Like Creed. They, they, I feel like they, they burn out fairly quickly, but you know, that's for another podcast. Okay, I, I will still sing that song if it comes on. I'm guilty of that. But uh, you can he hear more player. about that on the Johnny Cree podcast coming. Never. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that is fun. I like that you make the, the theme the list and I did not know that you were uh, growing your garden of killer pumpkins because I'm convinced that like why else are you just growing unless you're going to sell them are you going to open your own pumpkin patch no that's not financially profitable but um, I am going to share them with friends I want one yeah hello <laughs> you'll probably have like three I yeah I'm not sure if you can see the, yeah but we're sitting we, in front we of need pumpkins more. right now uh, so. uh and uh, favorite Halloween candy? People are going to roast me over this, but candy corn. No, fuck no. The candy corn is great, man. I love candy corn, but everyone who's like not a Halloween person is like, ew, no, I want the king size Snicker bars. Um, hot take, but <laughs> anyone who's not a Halloween person can go fuck themselves. <laughs> I mean... You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> no, but I've had a lot of people be like, oh, so you love Halloween? What's your favorite candy? Like, that's kind of like the second question after, like, what's your favorite movie? Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, candy corn. They're like, oh. I'm like, let me guess. You like Swedish Fish. Ooh. <laughs> I, do you? Do you like Swedish I Fish? I do like Swedish oh, Fish. I don't... I don't... Um, the thing, so with, the like thing with the thing with Swedish Fish is that, like, unless you're eating them side by side with, like, salty 
popcorn or something, you can only have a couple because they exactly. are fucking sweet. They're not something that you're just like by the handful, like. <laughs> I I will like my sister's answer to this question, um, which I think is, is, you know, really maybe my second or third, but it just kind of one ups yours, which is it's what we have sitting on our counter right now, the, the pumpkin. The pumpkin ones. The pumpkins okay, so are the... I kind of, like, put those all together. Yeah. Because they're the same. They, they really are the same thing. The um, pumpkin just has a little bit more bite to it, a little bit more chew, because it's and more it's dense. Bigger. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, because there's also, like, the caramel candy corn. Mm hmm Because I remember last year, my mom made fun of me. It was, like, end of November, and Vaughn's had, like, a harvest collection mm -hmm. of candy, them, corns, candy yeah. corns and it was like the pumpkins the like caramel apple and she's like shouldn't that be expired and i was like i don't care it still tastes the same well like <laughs> expired probably not because i'm pretty sure those things would survive in nuclear winter but yeah just like roaches yeah <laughs> but i still uh, eat them <laughs> The candy corn, not the roaches. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank, thank you for yeah, specifying on that, yeah. Well, tonight we are talking about a very unique film, and I would say a very underviewed film since neither one of it of us have uh, had seen this movie before I've watching never heard it, of it I have no idea how you found it. Well, actually, you told me how you found it. We'll get into that. Yeah. Um, but it is the 1986, uh, hair metal rock film, Trick or Treat. Not to be confused with Trick or Treats, which Trick I believe came out in 1982. Oh or, God, another one? or, uh, Trick or Treat. Uh, which came out in 2009 and is the one that um, all of horror fandom knows and loves, uh, starring the, uh, you know, pumpkin head yeah. Sam uh, from Michael Dowry. Uh, but I digress. We are talking about the rock and roll film that was originally, I don't know if you noticed this, um, when the title card went up, it did not say trick. Trick or treat! It said Ragman. I did notice that, which which is, kind of confused me. So I'm assuming that there was a, a studio head that came in and was like, <laughs> "What the fuck is Ragman?" Like, and that's... then the director was like, "Well, you know, it's the name of the main character. It's his nickname." And the studio was like, "That's not gonna make any fucking money. We're calling it Trick or Treat because it's Halloween." Well, yeah, and also it's not gonna let anyone know that it's like a Halloween themed movie. Ragman? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. You gotta start looking at things with your uh, uh, producer glasses and, you know, <laughs> just seeing dollar signs. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we're just gonna hop right on into it and uh, stop beating around the bush um, as much as I like beating around the bush. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, what a great sound effect to, to follow <laughs> that that innuendo right there. Um, in the film, a young teenager who is an outcast in high school is abused and tormented by a group of so much cooler than him type of characters and... Uh, he decides to make a deal with the devil in hopes of getting some sort of revenge on his tormentors and blah, blah, blah. You've seen it all before. Or have we? I don't like that description. I just feel like <laughs> if you want to really uh, break it down, um, we can do Carrie. We can do okay. Evil yes. Speak, I believe, is the name of the Clint Howard uh, 1980s film with uh, that stars a youngster who is bullied and uses a computer, uh, the internet rather, to um, strike a deal with the devil and attack his tormentors. I believe that is what it is called. Oh my god, don't tell me that's the same premise. <laughs> 
Because uh, <laughs> now I'm like, wait, this is not um, <laughs> Let me see here. I'm going to pull it up She's really, more really into quick. the 80s than I am. But <laughs> uh, still love the 80s. Okay. Yeah, Evil Speak, one word, 1981, starring Clint Howard, the brother of Ron Howard. Yes, uh, uh, it's right here. The uh, synopsis is an outcast military cadet taps into a way to summon demons and cast spells on his tormentors through his computer. Thank you very much. So we have Evil Speak, we have Carrie, and we have Ragman, a.k.a. Trick or Treat, and I'm sure I could continue to name all sorts of movies that fall under the guise of a teenager is bullied and then tries to get revenge and with the assistance of electronics or or telekinesis or the <laughs> devil or something along those lines yeah. and then maybe takes things a step too far yeah um so we are going to discuss the behind the scenes of this film, the making of this film, the characters, and blah, 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 and its reception, and maybe why um, it is not as well known as it probably should be, um, since there is really not a lot of access to this on physical media. You can't really get... I, at least not here in the States, I don't think you can get a Blu-ray of it. Uh, there might be some uh, stuff overseas that you can get. But here in the U.S., I don't believe there's any hard copy media that you can get for any affordable price anyways. And as far as I can tell, it, uh, um, as far as I can tell, uh, there's no place that it is streaming uh, other than YouTube, which is how we watched it tonight. Which so, is fine, but yeah. no subtitles, which is hard for me. Yeah, because we're just, we're a couple old farts yeah, over here, and we like to be able to you know, read <laughs> what the, <laughs> the rock and roll 30s. is saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Abby, I'm going to let you take it away. Um, we're going to talk about our likes and our dislikes and maybe some of the stuff in between. So, why don't you go ahead and... Give me the good stuff. Hit me with all of the things you liked about this movie. Yes. Okay. Um, reading over my notes. Okay, the humor was like perfect balance. At first, when we started watching it, I was like, oh, okay. And it was a little like slapstick, but I had to remember, okay, it's like 80s. That's kind of how they played with mm -hmm. it. Um, but it was like a perfect balance to like some scary stuff, not to mention like we'll go into this further, but the main character, whoever that actor was, he was brilliant. Like he just like sold me on it. Um, cause you know, the supporting actors and actresses were, you know, supporting, mm -hmm. um, but he really made the film for me, um, with being kind of. I guess he was supposed to be a nerd. Don't consider him one. I would have totally dated him in high school. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was really fun to me, seeing the progression of his character, like, being, like, this nerd again, and then going into kind of being, like, hypnotized by his hero, and then realizing, like, oh, my God, no, my hero is actually the enemy of everyone. So that whole thing was, like, Super cool to see that progression. Yeah, I have that uh, really up up at the top of my my good stuff list. Uh, just that the actor who plays Eddie, um, let me pull it up here just, really quick. Yeah. Um, his name is uh, Mark Price, uh, who I'm not familiar with, but I agree. I thought he is very natural, just very mm -hmm. believable. Yeah. Um, Nothing it didn't, felt forced. Yeah, it didn't feel like he was acting. Um, he felt like a teenager kid and kind of put in this this uh, really unbelievable situation. And um, how he reacts to everything is that old terrible expression, acting is reacting. But the way he reacted to everything that was happening was um, really just kind of how... I would see myself reacting to a lot of stuff, which is just yeah. with this air of levity where you're like, I, this, this is 
preposterous that this is even happening. So you're kind of, you know, being humorous about it almost. Mm -hmm. And like how he would react to like his mom walking into the room or something like that. It just, it all felt very natural, very believable. And yeah. he was an easy um, uh, protagonist to root for. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like with these sorts of, stories where you have the bullied kid who then finds their self-confidence and kind of ends up overdoing it they end up becoming kind of the villain in the end and that he never feels like that he yeah. he gets to the point where he start starts to do that and then immediately realizes that he's he's this done something him. wrong yeah. mm -hmm. so he's able to maintain that sort of innocence so the actor of Mark Price and the character of Eddie Weinbauer um, that he plays, I, I found him immensely likable as well. <laughs> very yeah. likable from the start. Um, and very believable as someone going through, you know, that teenage angst. Yes. I did also like that the way that high school was portrayed, it's just like, I remember being younger and watching these movies and thinking it wasn't going to be like divided like that, but it is, you know, you got the jocks, you got the nerds, mm -hmm. you got the metalheads, which apparently in this movie, a metalhead is a nerd. I'm like, yeah, is that, I don't, I don't know. That was new to me, but yeah, definitely enjoyed that one thing I will say for this movie being in 1986, I was very impressed by the special effects. I think you need to watch more eighties movies, sister, because I do watch they <laughs> uh, they are renowned for their special effects. I mean, there okay, there I is a hint see. of some here and there. There's a hint of cheesiness, but um, a that's part of the charm, and b they're doing everything practical, which makes yes. it that much more tangible, which makes it that much more even if it even if it doesn't come across as believable maybe by today's standards but by then it was impressive and by now it's still more entertaining than to, CGI yeah. mm -hmm. you know that yes 100% agree with that so yeah you're right I should watch more I got a whole list for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know he does um I've seen half of them but you know very good um so yeah that was like super impressive for me also someone coming from like watching more new age i guess you would say horror movies i was very impressed with how like there was a scene where obviously he actually physically destroyed mm -hmm. his record player and i'm like oh my god i would give anything for you not to do that but then like when um sam Kerr, Kerr? sammy Kerr? was that his uh this is like the see what, what hero oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 it is there were like veins pulsing mm -hmm. out of these like standing speakers mm -hmm. and that was actually like they blew i don't know how they did it but they blew air into it somehow i was like oh my god i want to see more of that in like modern film instead of just like oh we can cgi it or we can like <laughs> fake it this way yeah i do feel that in today's today's like horror i feel like because there's been so much backlash against CGI, a lot of horror filmmakers don't do that. They'll say, you know, we push for practical. Yeah. Which I think a lot of them do, but I feel that particularly with uh, the elevated horror sort of like, um, you know, Babadook, Midsommar, Hereditary, so um, all oh. good movies, and all having, or at least particularly Hereditary and Midsommar, having some super gory, you know, realistic practical effects, mm -hmm. it's either a lot of this stuff, a lot of the, that sort of stuff that you would see in the 80s where you would, like, linger on it and showcase the special effects, they either do it really quick, or they do it off-camera or out of focus, yeah. so mm -hmm. you're not... You know, they, they think they're being, and to a degree they are, they think they're being clever and yeah. not quite showing it or showing just enough. And there there is a, a, 
a, for lack of a better word, a, a genius to that, an auteur element, mm -hmm. if yeah. you will, um, to show the audience just enough that it lets their their brain do the rest. The imagination go wild. But yeah. that was the great part of the 80s is that it was in the heyday of practical special effects mm -hmm. and they would showcase these effects. They would build scenes around showing off the practical effects and what they could do and that was kind of like what you came to the horror movies for was yeah. to see these these fantastical things play out um in front of you i'm going through the nightmare on elm street series right now i'm watching them all in a row and they're mm -hmm. just the the special effects on display it's just fucking incredible i don't even know any other way to say it the way how it holds up to this day and how good everything looks mm -hmm. Well, that's like an elite level. <laughs> like, elite. It's true, and there's a lot of there's a lot of shitty stuff throughout the '80s too. But again, like I said, for me personally, that's like part of its charm. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, uh, I I agree. There's there's uh, a lot of fun special effects in this, particularly what they do with. It just seems like there's like lightning and explosions going off every you know five minutes, which is really cool. And yeah. okay, so. He, you were a little distracted in this scene, but there was a scene where a woman puts on some headphones and she's like erotically listening to music. And it's like this hand is taking off her clothes. I would like to I would like to interject here. I was distracted <laughs> while trying to manage my son. Exactly. I Not that I was that. so no. invested no, 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 no. in no. The, the nakedness, which don't get me wrong. I put my son <laughs> down for a minute. <laughs> He's right like, when the bra like, popped oh, off. Please. I made a point <laughs> to be there when the bra popped off, and I was, so. Which, okay, but the bra popping off was not, like, the best part of the scene, because <laughs> it was a very slow, like, it started off yeah. in her ears, and then as, you know, you can see the whatever SFX they used for this electric hand going down her body, but, like, her clothes were, like, snapping open, and, like, you couldn't like it yeah. looked real to me. how how it looked that. real because yeah. obviously like the green mist or whatever that's yeah. like caressing her that is added on top of the film yeah um in post but them getting the the clothes to come off and all that that all looked really cool yeah it was super cool and like even took her seatbelt off like mm -hmm. i actually went into that scene initially like wait you guys were about to bone and then he left to go pee because he's too drunk and now you're gonna listen to some music i was like what that's not how it works but then when i realized what the music did yeah. i was like okay oh, hey, it's that, all coming together um, yeah i appreciate that yeah <laughs> what else you got for me on your goods um let's see oh harvey osborne <laughs> Please, you go ahead. Oh my god, so um, we're watching the opening credits and it, you know, announces everyone who's in the film and you had mentioned, oh, Ozzy Osbourne is in this and I'm like, oh, is that before he ate the bat or after? And literally, in the opening scenes, it's Like, panning, not but 30 seconds later. <laughs> it's panning from, like, uh, Sammy Kerr, whoever, who was his you know, guy he loved, to literally this poster of Ozzy Osbourne with a bleeding headless bat in his hand. And I was like, oh, there's our answer. You, well, you said we'll find out the answer. And then yeah. 30 seconds later, we found it out. So you think he's going to be, wait, can we spoil this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're, we're, it, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Um, sorry. I just haven't seen things like Barbarian yet. I don't want anyone to spoil I it. I haven't seen that either. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Okay. Um, so... You think he's gonna like come into this movie being like super metal, super like biting the heads off of rats or bats or whatever? Why not both? Yeah, or both, double fisting. <laughs> um, but he's a freaking evangelist, right? Yeah. And he's like, rock music is destroying our kids, and I was like, what? <laughs> I thought like when he first popped up on the screen. And there was that. There was that. There was that hint of. Uh, there was that hint of like this guy looks familiar, but it didn't register. And then when you said, "Oh my god," I was like, that's Ozzy. "Oh my god, that's Ozzy Osbourne," <laughs> and I just thought that that was such a genius, mm -hmm. genius use of a cameo. Yeah. Uh, because he's all kind of like 
but he doesn't look anything like no. himself. There was no makeup on him as far as like the dark eyes that he would do, and it was he was very clean cut, like. And it's just a great like little bit, little segment of him on the television, um, you know, as this this evangelist reverend just talking trash about rock and roll music and <laughs> it was just a great little little nod to anyone who you know knows anything about rock and roll um and he he did great and it was just it yeah i fucking loved that it was hilarious it played into the look kind of like this is a like comedy horror mm -hmm. at the same time you know. mm -hmm. yeah that that there's a lot of that throughout too this was a movie that just it, there's a light-hearted fun element to it mm -hmm. that i would say that you don't get from movies like evil speak or carrie no. um that oh, no. end very very dark and are pretty pretty dour throughout to be to be quite honest and this movie is really from start to finish is a fun silly movie there's definitely some dark moments in it but overall it's it's not taking itself too seriously which no. i think really works in its favor yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> i would agree hit me with your next thing um i mean i at the beginning of this because me being like studious and like super looking yeah, into details taking i was single. taking a lot of notes and i was like okay, we got no, 16 just... pages of notes <laughs> <laughs> i was like okay i just need to enjoy this i did like i really appreciate when like music and a movie like directly lines up with like what's actually happening mm -hmm. so um also, you must love Toy Story then. So just the Randy Newman well, explaining everything that's happening on the okay. Yeah, no, I mean it's kind of <laughs> or, or just like when you know things just match up. Um, it was when oh crap! It was again at the beginning of the film, and I think it's either right after he learned that his rock star hero died or something. Mm -hmm. And he was t literally tearing the posters off the wall and there was a song that was saying tearing down the walls while he's like shredding all these posters so like i kind of just really enjoyed that I it's, like your, uh, it's your type a personality yes am this. i type a i don't know i don't know i feel like we're pretty similar yeah we're pretty similar yeah i'm pretty type a yeah. <laughs> but i just saw that and i was like that's when i was like deep diving into this film at mm -hmm. first and then i was like hey let's just relax and enjoy yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> let's not take things too seriously <laughs> Uh, you know all those AP classes in high school and then like going into college like what does this mean and I was like god it's just trying to be artistic yeah I mean the very first thing I have written down for my goods is and this is this telling of what a different track we were on yeah. right out the gate it yeah. said I have in quotation marks rocktober morning um, <laughs> as as <laughs> delivered by uh, the great Nuke, who was played by none other than Gene Simmons. Uh, Nuke is a radio DJ, and uh, he is uh, playing some rock and roll music in October, and that's how you get Rocktober, which I thought is amazing, and I'm going to continue to use moving forward. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to steal that from you, too, because <laughs> when I was like, October? Are you kidding me? How have I not thought of that before? Yeah, I'm. I feel. I'm sure that I just don't listen to enough radio, and that you know, yeah. radio DJ saying it all the time. Oh, but this was '86. Uh, like, yeah. no, radio. I listen to radio, unfortunately, a lot. Um, and no, they don't say that. That's good to know. <laughs> they don't really play rock and roll on the radio. Right? And that well, unless you actually are like listening, like well, yeah, KROQ yeah, or like yeah. Say, yeah. yeah, yeah that, um, uh, whatever the satellite radio is and go find the Serious rock section. Action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Uh, anything else on your goods list? Um, I've pretty much hit all my goods. Yeah, good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, I'll, uh, tackle the ones that, um... Yeah, what'd you, what'd you like? Yeah, maybe whatever, uh, we didn't hit. So I already talked about October. We already talked mm -hmm. about 
uh, Mark Price as Eddie. Mm -hmm. uh, thought the uh, backwards record talking right in the very beginning when it first happens and he comes out of the dream with all the fire and mm -hmm. people burning. I thought that was very creepy and it just had... Oh, yeah. Because um, we've all kind of been in that you come out of a nightmare and... Almost like a fever dream. Yeah, and, yeah. and nothing quite feels right mm -hmm. and you're not sure if you're still dreaming or not. I actually had that happen this morning. <laughs> yeah, I uh, feel like I have it happen every night and it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> uh, but I liked... That that was a that was probably the only really the only time in this movie where I was just like, yeah, I don't like that. I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, I would agree. It's just a, yeah. just a subtle little 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 moment, but I thought it was very well done. Just mm -hmm. kind of makes you uncomfortable, and I I, I thought that was great. Um, yeah. We already talked about the entire car scene. Um, how great just it just is as this for as. Shocking is what is happening, which is, you know, essentially a young woman being molested by a spirit, um, which if you... Oh, that car scene. I'm like, there's more than one car scene. <laughs> there, there are actually quite a few car scenes in this where <laughs> cars are just on fire and barreling through the fucking street. Yep. Um, there's multiple scenes like that, too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, it's such a well-executed scene and is creepy and just has this whole the the special effects are great and the music and just how everything plays out um i would say leading up to that scene there's this great long pan uh shot of just trees blowing in the wind and it's all silhouetted so you have like the the sun setting in the background and you get these beautiful you know, yellow and red colors, and um, the trees are blowing in the wind, you see leaves rustling on the ground, and it just feels like fall, it feels like Halloween, yeah. um, which is my biggest thing. If you want to make a Halloween movie for me, you just gotta make it feel yeah. like Halloween, and that shot in that shot, I was like, all right, cool, this is clearly happening. I mean, in, in that October. shot, you couldn't help but say, like, oh my god, that feels like October. Yeah. This feels like fall. And I was like, I completely agree. I have this thing, I wasn't really, and we've touched on this before, I wasn't really allowed to celebrate Halloween, mm -hmm. per se. Growing up as a youngster, we celebrated the harvest. Um, you know, went to our church and played games and got candy. That's what? how I did it. I did not ever go trick-or-treating until I was like in my teens mm -hmm. um but I do recall there just being a, a time in school when I was very young and we were like reading these these books and they weren't scary books they were just like Halloween or like fall books fall themed and yeah. you know just the 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 before pumpkin pumpkin spice so yes yes <laughs> long before um but, you know, they would just have, like, these orange backgrounds and the, the silhouettes of the, the trees with no leaves and just that feeling of fall has always mm -hmm. stuck with me. And that's, like, anytime I get anything resembling that, I'm like, oh, that's Halloween. And that, yeah, that, that yeah. shot really just, like, sold it for me. And I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about Ozzy Osbourne. Um, so good. There's a, a great bit where um, Eddie asks his friend Roger to go break into a car to steal a cassette tape. And it's great because he goes through this whole bit to try and, um, you know, He's wrangle trying to the, use like a, a clothes hanger, a hanger to, to like... unlock the car <laughs> that is um, already unlocked, which is great. And the thing that really got me that, like, hit me right out the gate is that it is broad daylight. And he is wearing black clothes with, like, a black beanie. And, like, he's trying to be, you know, incognito. But it's broad daylight when he's trying to break into the car. But did car. you hear what he said? What did he say? He's like, I'm going to die. I'm going to get killed right now. Someone's going to kill me. <laughs> it's it's great. It's, uh, it's just a great little scene. Just a, a, 
the comedy is on point, mm -hmm. and it's all like subtle little things, and I, I thought that was great. Um, uh, the bit where um, Sammy Kerr reaches through with his magic powers, reaches through the TV and pulls out the old lady, and the he, as he pulls as he pulls out the old lady out of the TV, she just comes out and she's like this like little like cocoon. No, it's shriveled up. Like, yeah, like, just nothing left, and it's just so great, and it's so ridiculous and hilarious all the time. That actually time. was shocking to me in, yeah. like, the best way possible. I just, it's not something that you're expecting at all. Like, that <laughs> shit just doesn't happen, so. It's just like, it's just, when, when you see something that ridiculous happen in front of you, you're just like, what the shit, you know? It was great. I, I love that. Um... I had here that all I think all the actors are very good for an eighties movie and I, I watch a lot. So all the actors in here, like his friend Roger, like again, great comedic timing, very believable, the part where like Eddie's like feeling his pulse and he's like, he's dead, and then he like opens his eyes and he's like, actually I'm not. <laughs> and I <laughs> just I'm not. I'm it's scared. it's so good. And um even uh What's it? Lisa, she's good. She's, you know, nothing amazing, but she's she's Leslie. good. There's there's Leslie. uh Oh, it is Leslie. Sorry. Yeah. The actress's name is Lisa. Lisa. Sorry. Yeah. What are the odds? Um <laughs> and uh you know, I do think that her and um Mark Price have good chemistry together. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um there's that uh I like the like death by toilet almost where Sammy kind of gets sucked into the toilet and he can't get out. I just thought that was like something that you don't see. That was like one of my dislikes. <laughs> That's fine. You're allowed to have that as a dislike. Okay. Um, I liked it because I just, you don't see anything like that. And I was like, that's pretty cool because that's just, you don't think of anything like that. It's a little like, you know, you're kind of taking away some of the, the menace of this character, I would say. But at the same time, I I just we're really dealing with a comedy at this point, and I was getting a kick out of that. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. I can see that. Uh, I have uh, titties with an exclamation point because guess what, gang? There's boobs in this movie. At least three. two sets, if not three sets. I feel well, like there's I, like the big like school party where they're all at like yeah, school, and there's, there's girls with there. their tops off. I'm like, I didn't do that in high. I don't know. I, I mean, was going to the wrong high school. <laughs> I was going to the wrong high school. Um, and yeah, then you have the uh, the gal in the the car mm -hmm. as the aforementioned bra popping off. Um, and then the soundtrack is amazing. This is just this great, great hair metal rock all the way through. Um, and uh, just there's some actually like fun songs yeah. in there too mm -hmm. so um i think that was really one of the first things i ever heard about this film is that it's not a great film but it's got a great soundtrack and you know i don't know if i completely agree with that um but uh we'll we'll deal with with my <laughs> final thoughts on the film later on yeah um but now that we have wrapped up our likes it's time to talk about the shit. <laughs> so, um, what do you got for me? What didn't you like about this movie? Um, well, I just hate bullies. I And that's just like an overarching theme. And just like, I just hate seeing that. So that annoyed me. Because it's I... It's kind of the whole premise of the movie there, babe. Um, you know... Yes, I understand that. I don't like bullies either. I, I just, I don't, I don't. So that's why I was like, okay, that's stupid that I wrote that down as my first dislike because, duh, it's a premise of the movie. But he ends up overcoming his bully, which is awesome. He actually ends up helping his mm -hmm. bully. Yeah. Which, like, that brought it full circle for me. It's again where I'm like, in in most movies of this this caliber, it's always like that. he would, he, I would say they, they wouldn't do that. They would end up, really? you know, killing because someone like Carrie. Goes oh, through, okay. Kills him. Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, the 
the one with Clint Howard kills his bullies. Like True. there's this this revenge thing because they get lost in it. Yeah. And again, that's the great thing about the character of Eddie. Like he, he started doesn't... to get lost, but then yeah. he pulled himself yeah. out from that, which yeah. is why I like the character even more. Um, so yeah, that was my first one. Kind of bullies are bad. <laughs> oh, what I didn't like is that at first when he's playing the record backwards. It was really hard to understand. I think that might have been the point, though. I think oh. I don't think you're supposed to like understand it right out the gate. Actually, you know what? I yeah, because us being old folks, because we're like thirty. And and to be fair, <laughs> we were watching it off of YouTube, and just the audio quality on that was not great, even with the standard audio. So yeah, um, I think there might have been a, a moment where we both thought we missed something. I just in I don't, retrospect, it was supposed I don't, to be like implied. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't mm -hmm. think that was the case. I think it was supposed to be like. It sounds like he's saying something, but like we, rhymes with. Yeah, we don't kinda, quite yeah. get it at this point. I think that's you know what, what that yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. If I could play devil's advocate, kid. I I do like your interpretation of that. So that's no longer a dislike. That's just huh, wow. something in the film. What else you got? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, <laughs> make you love this movie through and through. <laughs> <laughs> the freaking toilet being. Sammy Kerr's Achilles heel. It was water. I was... But it, it was <laughs> got like, sucked into the water. Okay. <laughs> but she flushed the toilet and he got sucked back. And then she flushed the toilet. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, there we go. He's done. No more. Oh, no. We still have 20 minutes left in the movie. Okay, what's going to happen? Um, Other dislike. Let's drive you off this bridge into a full body of water and you get electrocuted. But I'm totally fine. <laughs> the fuck? The I fuck? thought that too. I was like, why, why weren't there why like floating fish? Um, like, well, I feel like um, Eddie should have jumped out of the car. And exactly. Solved that I, problem, and, and I was like, maybe did, I thought like I was like not paying attention well enough, and like looked no. away for a second. I was like, did he, he get out of the car? He literally like, drives off a bridge into this big body of water where his hero not here anymore, electrocutes himself, and I'm like, Eddie, you're a fucking human being. <laughs> How are you not dead? And this, like, guy coming back from the dead is. I don't like that. <laughs> if I could play devil's <laughs> advocate. <laughs> okay, play devil's advocate. It's, you know, maybe... The budget got cut, so the, like, oh, we can get the, a stunt guy to jump out of the car. You know, Sammy's electricity <laughs> really can only harm him when he's in water because he's not projecting it outwards. I don't know. But he can vaporize people while playing a guitar? <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Listen. I'm being nitpicky. Listen, I am, You asked about my dislikes. I... <laughs> <laughs> this is the point of this segment. Is you're supposed to tell me what you didn't like, and you know what? I have no argument for that. That's that's a big gaping. You're welcome. Uh, plot hole. <laughs> uh, so you know, but again, we're just gonna say the budget got cut, and they kind of get a stunt man for that. So yeah, that's that's a that's a real bummer. <laughs> uh, anything else on the dislikes? Um. Oh yeah, my last one was bro would have been electrocuted. That's literally what I wrote because I had had some tequila by then. So yeah, that that's it. I like mine. That. I, like, yeah. I like I like how your your list ends or or begins with this this dissection of well you know the music is saying tear the walls down and it is being represented by what we see as Eddie tears down the walls and then oh just, my god and like, wait you just totally connected that because no, I, really I digress <laughs> then ends with son of a bitch would have gotten electrocuted <laughs> sorry that's how I work I embellished that a little bit um uh but uh yeah no that 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 is a big thing that like I just like I saw and immediately went out of my mind because I was like the movie's over and it's the eighties. Like, why are we? Uh, why are we? Uh, the hero yeah. one, you know? <laughs> We're not gonna be uh, splitting hairs over this shit. Um, I split hairs over that shit. Sorry. <laughs> Peace. Uh, I'm just kidding. Kind of. I hate to get into an argument with you. 
Ah, no, no. It's the 80s. I just got to keep saying that. <laughs> it's the 80s. It's the 80s. It's the 80s. Um, my dislikes, I don't have a lot. Um, just kind of like some randoms, like just his mom, Eddie's mom, like going into his bedroom. It was almost like she had never been in there before. And I was okay, like, I actually you know? yeah, did write that down. Yeah, like that's odd. Just like she's like looking at these records and being like, like shocked by it. I'm like, you see the way your kid fucking dresses. <laughs> like, and I'm sure he listens to his music really loud. Of course. Did you see that stereo system? Mm -hmm. Hello. Like, uh, you know, maybe you wouldn't be as shocked by this as like what we're what we're seeing right here. Excuse well, me. I kind of think it was like playing into that whole role of like the angsty teen who just like gets home and goes into his lair and like listens to his music. And she's like, because they definitely put her in all pink and white mm -hmm. and put him in all black. So they were trying to like juxtapose that, but still like that's. That's your son. And also, she has a boyfriend, and they're living in a really nice house, like, at what, and she's always home doing laundry and cooking, like. Yeah, I want to know more about this mom, actually. Right? It's I'm like, what are you individual. doing? Because how can you afford to pay for this house? And well, again, it was the 80s. <laughs> it was and, the 80s. Uh, That's the you excuse. You could still to afford to buy a home, then. Jesus Christ, right? Ooh, we might be getting a little too real for this podcast. Sorry. Nope. Um, let's see, uh, schools with Halloween dances. That was your dislike, right? It's, it's just like a frustrating thing. It's okay. not that I dislike the idea of Halloween dances. It's that, where the fuck are all these schools? Uh, cause this is one, um, Karate Kid also has a Halloween dance. And I'm sure there's at least one other movie that has a Halloween dance at a high school. What the shit? Mm -hmm. um, my high school sucked. So did mine. So we only have like prom and homecoming and the well, winter's like, ball and 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 Sadie Hawkins and all those those I dumb don't ones. Sadie Hawkins. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> worse for me. Probably good for you, but worse for me. I I did not I did not get invited to a Sadie. Hawkins. Are you kidding me? I was a nerd in high school. So what? I was. I did not get invited to a Sandy Hawk. Oh. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you can go if you want to call up some of the girls from my high school and yell at them. Those bitches that didn't invite you. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about your Sandy Hawkins. <laughs> oh, yeah, awkward. That good, huh? Not bad. Um, but speaking of awkward, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say I think all schools should have Halloween dances. I agree. Elementary, middle, high school. College. College. And then mm -hmm. office parties. Too, no, college does their own thing. So middle school, it's our elementary, middle school, high school. Like college does have Halloween. Yeah, they just do their own thing. They it's make it like a, a week long event. Sex and drugs. And exactly. Yeah. So, all the uh, things that make life worth living. Um, Touche. But yeah, back to the awkward stuff. Um, the kiss that Eddie gives. Leslie is got to be one of the most oh my like God. for two people that really do have good chemistry. That kiss, I, I was just like, hey. so it was like, mm, hey. mm, like let's just like, uh huh, real quick, yeah, like no, were they brother sad. and sister in real life or something? Because like, okay. that was I just like that a, vibe too. It's just like it's like <laughs> they get along great, but that was that was a wonky yeah, ass was, kiss right there. Yeah, that was gross. Um. And then there's, I just feel like there's a little bit of pacing issues here and there. The, the film kind of seemed to pick up, pick up, pick up, go really fast, go really fast, and then kind of go slow, go slow, go slow, go slow. Um, so it did kind of have this this awkward, and I, I can't even tell you specifics or what what I would fix. Um, I just noticed that there just seemed to be times when it was going really fast and then would start to drag out of nowhere. Well, like, I can interject and say that was both the times that, like, we used the restroom. But both of us came out of the restroom like, what did I miss? And we had to, like, I had to rewind it for you and you had to rewind it for me. So it was just kind of like, yeah. you think you know the pace of the movie? And then all of a sudden it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So it was a little, little, little wonky. Yeah. But um, 
Uh, any uh, random thoughts? Anything that just like popped out at you at any point in time that was neither good nor bad? Okay, so I really like the teenage angst, like the like opening scene of him being like, "Oh, I'm, so, like, I'm such a nerd," but then like makes eye contact with the girl that he eventually awkwardly kisses. Like, I just I enjoyed that, and also like how spot on the portrayal of like being awkward in high school is mm -hmm. because believe it or not i'm a nerd i was like a popular nerd no wait you're weird. gonna tell me you went to high school too oh my god yeah <laughs> that's crazy so did i <laughs> <laughs> um so i did enjoy that um i did think it was a little predictable because as soon as like the guy was like, oh, this is his last record. I'm like, either he's going to resurrect him or he's going to be possessed by him. So, like... Well, yeah, I, uh, I, I mean... You felt like I know, the start? Well, I knew a little bit more just by, like, Oh, seeing, I went like, into it blind. Like, pictures and stuff. Like, like I didn't watch oh. any trailers, but I've seen, like, a lot of, like, fan art. And they just did, like, a, a, a t-shirt release for it. Okay. Um, on... Fright Rags and maybe Gutter Garbs uh, on Instagram. So a couple of different um, t-shirt companies did uh, a release for it. So I was kind of like familiar plus I've seen the poster. So mm -hmm. I kind of got the gist of that there was going to be some some sort of uh, rock and roll demon hanging about. See, like, I went into it totally blind. Yeah, I had no like, idea about you... the record, though. Like, I had no idea yeah, that it was going to yeah. be, like, essentially a Ouija board of sorts. I think you even oh, said Oh, Ouija that. board. Yeah, I did say that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just really cool. Like, simple, basic, yeah. uh, fun little premise there. But I liked going into it totally blind, but then I was like, oh, okay, cool. We'll see the story of this. But, you yeah. know, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Um... Oh, I did like how you see the process of him, like, starting off as, like, metal nerd, and the more he, like, listens to it, he's, like, getting kind of, like, zombie, like, um, kind of, like, hypnotized, and, like, you can see he starts wearing, like, the rag around his mm -hmm. head and, like, extra chains, so it's, like, you can see the influence of yeah. that. I really enjoyed that, like, seeing that progression, and then seeing him, and that's when I was like, oh, this guy is doomed, because, like, he's totally feeding into this guy that's yeah. like just gonna take over his body and then he was like no and then tells his nerdy friend how to make it not happen and his nerdy friend doesn't really do it yeah but, you know um oh <laughs> my best one what are the odds of this is trick or treat and sammy her yeah and then trick or treat and sam i was yeah. just like is that is there like a that just might be me fishing for um her? i mean i think uh <laughs> you know i think i'm fishing yeah just in i doubt just given the spelling of this sammy that it has anything to do with sam uh Hain, if you will I or guess. Samhain. um yeah if we're looking for the correct pronunciation, but that is what Sam in uh, Trick or Treat mm -hmm. is named after. He's mm -hmm. his name is short mm -hmm. for Sam Hain, so uh, that's where that name is derived from. I just wrote it down because I said, "What are the?" But I really did. Like, you oh, did mention cute. that, and I thought that was you know <laughs> just a little uh, a fun yeah. little kinship, yeah, as it were. Um, I have uh, two random thoughts. Um, like in the beginning, the very, very beginning, like one of the earliest shots, uh, where we're being introduced to Eddie, he like, he's like moving around in the kitchen or something like that. And there's a TV on the counter and then there's a big fat cat just <laughs> sitting right there lounging around. I don't think we see that cat for the rest the ginger, of the movie. I know. And it was so cute. I was and it was this ginger cat, like right in front of the yeah. mm -mm. fucking, uh, Garfield as I live and breathe. Yes. Um, and then there's a part where um, Eddie's feeling real good about himself and decides that he is going to drive through every red light on the street. Because why the fuck not? <laughs> Just... But that was after he was under the influence. Oh yeah, obviously. But, you like, know, but it's I'm still just like... It, and I'm like... 
I mean, thank God those streets were barren because that could have been real messy for the boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, that is going to wrap up the uh, Johnny and Abby portion of this podcast where I'm specifically talking about, you know, what we liked and disliked. And then we'll, we'll wrap around uh, at the end of the next episode and tell you our, our final thoughts on the film. Um, but we are going to be jumping into the behind the scenes a little bit and probably some of that that music that we uh, we hear so much and maybe jump in talk a little bit about uh, some more character stuff if uh, we we think we can afford to <laughs> um, but uh, this is probably gonna wrap up the first episode on trick or treat the 1986 hair metal demon rock fest film starring Ozzy Osbourne and Gene Simmons. Um, but um, before we go, maybe a couple more Halloween questions. Um, now, if you had to fight Freddy Krueger or Pinhead from Hellraiser, which one would you choose? Freddy Krueger, 100%. Because I can lucid dream, I can control my dreams, Pinhead scares the shit out of me. Uh, on that note, how excited are you for the new Hellraiser film? Very excited. That and trailer feeling, was and feeling like good. I need to rewatch all the Hellraisers just to kind there's, of like there's like there's an obscene well, amount and there's really only like two or three good ones so okay well you send me the two or three good ones because I know I okay I'll like, just tell you right now Hellraiser yeah. and Hellbound Hellraiser two you know what yeah <laughs> those are if you really want to dabble um, Hellraiser three is not terrible and. I hear, I believe it's Hellraiser 6, I hear is pretty okay, but, um... I think I only went to 3, and yeah, then I stopped. Yeah, there, I they, like, it is a, a, so a, a great. series of diminishing returns, to say yeah. the least. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, dude, that trailer looks fucking sick! Uh, yeah. And I'm kind of a little, uh, frustrated because I usually don't get super duper excited for movies anymore. I try and keep my uh, my expectations low. Um, Why? Because they have a terrible habit of disappointing me these days. Well, you know. Uh, always... One of the ones that I saw that I went in with really, really low expectations oh, no. Oh, no. and was like supremely pleased with was, uh, was Nope. I still haven't seen it. Oh, uh, yeah. A lot of people hate it on that movie, but I... What? I, yeah, a lot of people just like... They're, mm. they're like, it wasn't what I was expecting. I was like, it wasn't what I was expecting either. And that's why, that's I why you it. love it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, man, I want you to see it so we can talk about it. Okay, well, I will definitely see it before we meet up again. Um, and, uh... What, um... What... Scares you more, spiders or rats? Okay. This is going to be, like, a little long of an answer. I was absolutely terrified of spiders my entire life until I had to live alone. And I was like, girl. Someone's got to kill these spiders. Okay, here's the thing. I don't <laughs> kill them. I save them. I do the whole, like, cup with, like, a little card under it. And I grew an appreciation for them, which my brothers had told me my whole life, they're more scared of you than you are of them, kind of thing. But I just had this irrational fear that, like, this tiny little thing was going to, like, literally jump right here, like, onto my face. Mm -hmm. So um, I just figured out how to deal with them on my own. And now I'm, like, totally cool with bugs, which is crazy. 
because uh, I used to be terrified of everything, and now I'm always like, oh, let's rescue it. Mm -hmm. Unless it's the Black Widow, then we kill those. Yeah, well, yeah, those anything, po die. anything poisonous. Any widow um, pretty much got to go. Yeah, no, rats, gross. They skitter across your feet. Like, I work at a place, and I have rats occasionally crawl across my feet, and it's disgusting. It's terrifying. Yeah, so, yeah, rats, mouse, whatever. Okay, yeah, without giving anything away, have I worked at this place, too? For a quick minute, you did. Oh, wow. But... It's, it's in a, like, semi-outdoor area, so that's kind of, like, expected. We don't even need to get anything else on that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, spiders I'm cool with. I used to deathly, like, I literally, I knew my phobia was so bad because if I was reading a textbook and there was, like, a spider on the page, I literally couldn't touch the page. And that's, like, that's, like, my, my body, like, revolted from it, so. Yeah. Well, I'm glad but to know that you, them. you've made progress <laughs> Yeah, yeah. as a human being. And I feel like at the end of the day, that's the only thing we can hope for. You know, if you start at point A and you end at point B, you know, there's a whole space between A and B that you just yeah. knocked out of the park. I did, yeah. And for more words of wisdom, you can continue to listen to the Johnny Horror Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Johnny Horror, and with me this evening, the lovely Abigail Bowman. And uh, we will continue our discussion of 1986's Trick or Treat in our next episode. So we hope to see you guys on the flip side. Adios, muchachos. Adios. Adios.